of Eagle's Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I want to invite you to stay tuned for the next few minutes as we talk about the subject of vision. I want you to know that God is creating a people today, a people of vision. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18, the writer of Proverbs says this, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Now, I want to go back and I want to read that again, and I want to put in our normal King James version of this particular verse. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, I like the new a little better than the old in the sense that it really explains what a vision is. We're not talking about an open-eyed dream, as sometimes we call a vision, where someone sees something happening, and I've had that happen in my life many times where I've seen things in what I call a vision with my eyes, seeing things happen. The other day I was listening to a brother as he talked about something that he saw in 2001 during the time of the 9-11 crisis in New York City and here in America and, and the world. And uh, that was a vision that he actually saw happening. And so what I want to talk about today is not necessarily that kind of vision. Now, God can give us that, but I want to talk about prophetic revelation. You see, God is a God who gives revelation. I remember when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Simon Peter, the guy that was often <laughs> opening his mouth at the wrong time and saying the wrong, time, wrong thing, excuse me, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus came back and he said, you're Simon. And he says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father, which is in heaven, has revealed it. Jesus was talking about the revelation that Peter had received concerning who Jesus really was. And I want you to know that God is still in the business of giving us that kind of revelation, showing us the truth, showing us the things that we need to understand and we need to be involved in here on this earth. And so God is giving us revelation and he is causing us to be able to walk in the power of that revelation and know that what he is doing is working in our lives. And so I want to go back to Proverbs 29, 18 again, and I want to read it in the New King James Version is the one that that's the one that I've been reading from. And it says, where there is no revelation, no vision, the people cast off restraint, the people perish in the old King James. People cast off restraint. One of the things that I think we need to understand is God is giving us revelation, which brings direction in our lives. But he also says to us, where there is no revelation, where there is no word from God, where God is not speaking and God is not showing what is going on in the future or even in the present in our lives, where our eyes are not open to that, people cast off restraint. What does that mean? What does it mean to cast off restraint? One of the best illustrations that I know about that was many years ago, I was in the nation of Colombia. We were driving through the Andes Mountains. As I looked over to my right, and we were on a two-lane highway, but as I looked over to my right, there was a precipice. And this precipice went 
hundreds of meters down the side of the mountain to the valley below. There were no guardrails. And uh, thank God I wasn't driving. But as I sat there looking out the window, looking down into that precipice below, uh, I felt uncomfortable. Why? There were no guardrails. But then we came to a stretch of the highway where the government had actually come in and had people put up guard rails. Do you know, as we got into that, it was the same precipice on the other side. But I felt more comfortable. Why? Because I could see where I am and I took comfort in the fact that if the driver loses control of the car, <laughs> we'll probably not go over the edge of the mountain because that guardrail is there. Our vision is like the guardrail. Our vision keeps us on the path, keeps us going the way that God intends for us to go. You see, that's vision, yes, but it's also restraint. So we don't perish so we don't die in the midst of some circumstances. Now, I want you to understand this. I have a vision for my life. I remember whenever I was just a boy, God spoke to me. You see, I've always been a player of guitar and a singer. I've done that all of my life. and. I was concerned about what God wanted me to do with my future. I was concerned about the direction that I was going to go. And my thoughts were that I was going to be a Christian musician, going, teaching, yes, but singing the Word of God. And if I was going to do any teaching, it would be about praise and worship and all of that. But one night after I finished a youth revival. I was only 15 years of age when I was doing these things. I finished the youth revival. The pastor of the church where we were having that revival drove me to my home. My mother, father, my sister were not at home. And so I went into the dark house, turned on the light, walked down the hall, past the bathroom. And when I walked past the bathroom, I heard this voice. Yes, I believe it was the voice of God, but I didn't at the moment. I heard this voice that said to me, coming from the bathroom, he said, I have not only called you to sing my word, I've called you to preach my word. I turned and looked into the bathroom, looking to see if there was somebody there actually speaking to me. Nobody was there. That's when I realized that God had given me a vision for my life, a plan, a purpose, uh, something to look forward to. And any time that I've ever come to a place of any kind of doubt, I go back to that vision. I go back and I say, God, you called me. You gave me a call from your heart to my heart. And I have a vision for my life. I have a vision for my future. I have a vision for everything that I'm going to do. And that vision is the fact that you've called me to preach the gospel. It is the fact that you've called me to do the work that Jesus actually also came into this world to do, to heal the sick, to cleanse the leper, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to preach <laughs> that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, Jesus told his disciples, I want you to go and do what I did. What you have seen me do, go do it. And that vision that God gave me back there at 15, that vision, 
has been the thing that has kept me on track all of my life. I believe that God has a vision for all of us. Now, I want to talk about that vision a moment concerning what we do with it. You see, I have discovered that the vision that God gives us has purpose. Do you know it determines what we're going to live for? Whenever I look at my own life right now, I'm in chronological years, 79 years of age. Looking at it in the natural, you might say, well, you don't have a lot of years left to preach and teach the Word of God. I'm sure that is true. I don't know when Jesus is going to come after me. I have no idea. And now I joke with my wife and tell her that I'm going to live to be 120, and you know, that's a possibility. So I may be around a long, long time. But when I look at where I'm at at 79, I see years ahead. Why? Because I haven't preached everywhere God showed me that he wants me to preach. I haven't even preached the messages that he's being, been birthing in my heart. And so I hold on to my vision and I say, Lord, this is what you said. Now, he said other things since then, but never in contradiction to that original word that he gave me. He has never contradicted what he spoke there in 1959 when I was 15 years of age. I want you to understand that God has kept my eyes on that vision. Now, as I said to you, yes, he has added to it. He showed me other things that I'm supposed to do, and I've been doing those things. But I always go back to that original word, the vision that he gave me back then. And then after we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God spoke more things into our lives, as I said. Now, I want to tell you something else. Our vision not only determines what we live for, but our vision determines how we invest our time, how we invest our talents, how we invest our money, literally how we invest our lives into other people. You see, the vision, if we have a vision from God, is going to keep us on track in every other area of our lives. Now, I mentioned there that it's going to determine how we spend our time. Some of us are constantly wasting time. You know, I want to say this. I, I, I sometimes get a little frustrated with people thinking that, well, you've got to be uh, every waking hour in the Word or in prayer or what have you like that. I, I don't think so. I believe that God has given us the privilege of even recreation and, and uh, resting and talking about other things and doing other things. But in a moment, God wants us to be able to pray, to be instant in prayer, instant in doing the things that he wants us to do, and that we don't have an argument with him. Why? Because our time is his time. And I hope you understand that. I'm not telling you to go and just spend your life doing other things. But, you know, I believe God trusts you. I believe God trusts you with your time. But God wants us to take our time, and our vision determines how we're going to do that. Our vision, as I said, and, uh, determines how we spend our money. It, in, it determines really how we use our lives. Now, there's another thing that I want to share with you, that our vision also determines our relationships. I remember when I met 
Sherry. It was a dark and stormy night, and it literally was. <laughs> I just like to tell the story that way. And um, she, because of a set of circumstances, ended up sitting across the table from me in the Student Union Building, which was a restaurant and post office and all of that, all in, in one at the university. She was sitting across the table from me and God spoke to me in that same voice that he spoke to me when I was 15 years old and called me to preach and he said, you're gonna marry her. I wanna tell you, I didn't tell her that right then. <laughs> but the storm was raging and she said to the whole group, uh, we came over here to check our mail because we thought the storm was over. It, it had stopped raining and the wind had stopped blowing and so we didn't bring umbrellas. And she says, I have an examination tomorrow morning. And so I said, I have an umbrella. And I walked her back to her dorm and found out her name and I went and I called and asked for her and invited her to go to church with me the next night, which was a Wednesday night. And from that point on, both of us began to realize that God had put it together. Now, I didn't tell her what God said for a long time because, you see, I knew better. I knew better than to say, God said to me, you are going to be my wife. Uh, that was not what I was going to do. And I hope you understand that. We don't always tell everybody everything we know instantly. But anyway, it, my vision determines the relationship that I have with her. My vision determines the relationship that I have with other people. Because you see, God wants to put people in my life and in your life who will help you fulfill the vision of your life. They will not be people that will drag you down. That's why sometimes we have to choose who we relate to who we spend time with. Because some people, and this doesn't mean that they're evil, doesn't mean that they're bad, but some people, the enemy could use to draw us away from our vision because they have their own vision. They have their own understanding. And they want to have you to help them be a success. Well, it's okay if God has okayed the relationship. But God wants us to understand there are times that we have to walk away from some relationships because not just that they may be toxic. I hear a lot about toxic relationships. It's not just because they might be toxic. It's just that it's not the will of God for you. And so sometimes... We have to make choices, and our vision will determine the relationships that we walk in. Our vision literally determines our future. What we see that God has put in front of us, that's our future. And as we hold on to that future, it's going to determine, or hold on to that vision, excuse me, it's going to determine our future. So we're going to be able to walk in the things of God and by the power of His Spirit. Let me ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing the things that you're doing today? I remember a number of years ago, a friend of mine heard about a church in the state of Texas he heard about some things that they were doing that were was touching people. And uh, so he called and got acquainted with the pastor over the phone. He said, is it possible for me to come and spend a few days uh, there, not necessarily with you, not wanting to take all of your time, but where I could visit your church and even talk to some of your leaders about why you're doing why what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing. The pastor said, yes, come on. So he went there and the pastor introduced him to his leadership and gave them permission to answer any questions that he had. And so he would go from department to department in their Sunday school and their children's church 
uh, even with the praise and worship and uh, you, you name it, he had permission to go and talk to them. And he said to me, he said, you know, the thing that amazed me more than anything else was this. I would ask the question, why are you doing what you're doing? And their answer would be, God gave our pastor a vision, a vision about building this church, a, a vision about our destiny as a church. And I'm doing what I'm doing to help that vision come to pass. You see, that also goes back to what I said about relationships. It goes back to say to us that we need to let our vision determine our relationships. These people had decided they were going to have a relationship with that pastor, a relationship to build the kingdom of God. And so your vision is going to determine everything that you do. It's going to determine your life. Sometimes I ask pastors, I'll say something like this. Why did you start this church? And once in a while, I'll get a beautiful answer like, well, God gave me a vision and God showed me what to do. Sometimes I get another answer. And that answer is this. Well, I just thought it would be a good thing to do. I didn't have anything else to do. And I just thought, well, okay, God's called me to preach. And so I think I'll go start a church. Do you know that's not the reason to start a church? Just because maybe you're, you can preach and teach maybe better than others. Maybe you uh, have the anointing of the new Billy Graham for our generation or for your generation. But that doesn't mean that you're supposed to start a church. I don't know if you know it or not, but Billy Graham never pastored a church. He never did. He was an evangelist all of his life. That was the vision that God gave to him. Yes, he started a ministry, and Billy Graham Evangelistic Ministry is still going and still strong under his son, Franklin. But I want to, I want to say this to you. He knew what God had called him to do, and so Billy Graham did it. Now, God wants us to do what God has called us to do. He wants us to let our vision direct us, not just the fact that, well, I think it's a good idea to do something. God has a plan, and God has a purpose for everything. And so I want us to go a little bit further. Everything that we do in the kingdom of God should be based on the fact that we have a vision that is from him, from God, because in the middle of it, you're probably going to be attacked. I hate to have to say that. I, I, I don't want to sit here before the camera and the microphone today and, and have to say that to you that you may be attacked, but I live in a real world. I don't know about you, but I think you do too. I think you live in a real world where the enemy wants to stop you. I know he wants to stop me. He wants to keep me from doing certain things. In fact, uh, I, yes, I'm going to go ahead and say this. The last few weeks, uh, and months I have not been on a schedule concerning these videos because of attacks from the enemy, physical attacks on my body. But I'm doing well, by the way, and I am going to totally recover, and I'm going to be continuing preaching and teaching the Word of God. And so I appreciate your prayers and standing with me, but I just want you to understand there will be attacks, attacks against you, you mean the enemy doesn't like me? No, he doesn't. Satan doesn't like any of us, and he is going to attack. So what are you going to do? You're going to hold on to your vision. In the middle of the attacks, you see, 
Your vision is what's going to keep you on the road. Remember what I said to you about the guardrails earlier in this teaching today. Those guardrails are there to keep you on the highway. The vision is there to keep you on the plan and purpose of God. Now, there's some other things that I want to share with you very quickly here as we come toward the end of this video today. Your vision will get the will of God accomplished in you. Some of you there are listening and watching me today are pastors, your leaders, but all of you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, all of you should have a vision for your life. But I want to talk to pastors and leaders just for a moment. God gave you a vision for the church, I hope. But God will also want you to understand that because of that vision, that he will accomplish his will through you if you let him. When I look at the Bible, I look at Abraham. Abraham was in a city called Ur of the Chaldees. He was raised there. That was his place, but there was something different about him. Evidently, he had an encounter with God. And God spoke to him and said, get out of your country. Go into a place that I'm going to show you. And so he obeyed the voice of God. Why? Because that voice put a vision in him for the future. Now, he didn't see the place yet, but he started that direction going where God was leading him. You see, that was his vision. That was what God said. When I look at David, you know, David was the youngest son of a man by the name of Jesse. The prophet Samuel knew that God was going to replace Saul with someone. And God led the prophet to the house of Jesse. And he said to him, he said, call all of your sons in. Well, he called all of the men except for David, the youngest. David was out. <laughs> it's amazing. He was out just tending the sheep. You know, some of us, we need to be tending the sheep. We need to be touching people's lives, whether we know the will of God and purpose of God or not. Because you see, God wanted to give David a vision beyond just keeping his father's sheep, but he was showing himself faithful by keeping his father's sheep. And so Samuel looked at all of the boys and rejected everyone. And he said to Jesse, don't you have another son? Well, yes, he's the youngest. He's out in the field with the sheep. All he knows how to do is just obey his father. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. And so he's out there and he's obeying his father. He's called in. Samuel takes a horn of oil and pours out over David's head and ordains him to be the next king of Israel. God gave him a vision. Now we know that his life wasn't perfect, but he fulfilled that vision. What about Paul, Saul of Tarsus, as he was known before he was called Paul? Saul of Tarsus was on the road to Damascus. He had an encounter with Jesus Christ. He called it a heavenly vision. He stood before King Agrippa later in his life. And he said, King Agrippa, one thing I want you to understand. This is what God has done in my life. And he gave him his testimony. And then he said, and I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. That's Acts chapter 26, verse 19. I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. My greatest desire 
is to when I come to the end of my life, the end of this road that I'm on right now, that I might be able to say, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision, to the revelation that God has given me concerning my life and the calling and purpose that he has placed upon me. I want you to understand something today, people, that our God has a vision, a revelation, a prophetic revelation for all of us. And he wants us to be about the Father's business. I'm going to be talking about vision over the next several weeks, or yes, I'm believing to be able to do it each week for a while here. But I want you to understand that God is a God of vision. He is a God of revelation. He is a God who wants to speak into you concerning his plans and his purposes for you. And so I share with you this message today, knowing that God has a plan and purpose that he's putting in your life, and he is going to fulfill that as you allow him to. So, going back to something I said a few minutes ago, let your vision, let that revelation determine the living of your life. Well, that's my message for today, but I want to pray for you. I want to pray for God to touch you, to minister to you, for you literally to be used of God. Father, I come to you with this people. I thank you for them. I thank you, God, for whoever watches this video here on Facebook or YouTube or wherever it may be. I pray that you cause them to walk in the power of the vision that you have given for their lives and that you cause them to be a success. Lord, I thank you that you're the God of success in our lives. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to minister to us, you can go to PayPal. And use Eugene May at eugenemay.org. Or you can just pray for us. God bless you. You have a great day. God bless and I'll see you again.